Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for January 18th. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I did the research earlier in the day, already recorded this, and the lighting was a bit more harsh than I realized. I was not able to overcome it at the time and not able to overcome it in editing. So uh, when I should just be putting the video together and getting it up, I'm recording it again. <laughs> anyway, here we go. This day in history for January 18th. January 18th is the 18th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 347 days remaining to the end of the year, except for leap years when there are 348 days remaining to the end of the year. We're going to take another look at words that have entered the language in the last 25 or so years, and today's word is selfie. <laughs> Pretty sure everyone who would be viewing this would know what a selfie is, but I'll tell you anyway, a selfie is a self-portrait, usually taken with a, a phone camera. The etymology of this word is from Old English, self. Earliest documented use of this word is 2002, but let's remember that words are nearly always used for a while before they're documented early 2000s to late 1900s, I'm pretty sure, selfie. I have placed a link in the show notes to some selfie memes, and we'll probably add some here while I'm talking. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, remember that you can share this video with others with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. And there is a link in the show notes to my This Day in History playlist where you can see all of them if you want to. There's a link directly to YouTube and also uh, to my blog where you can see them day by day. I'll also put a link in the, sh the, uh, the show notes in the iCard in the corner up there. And with that, we're going to start with January 18, 1778, when James Cook was the first known European to discover the Hawaiian Islands. He named them the Sandwich Islands in honor of the then First Lord of the Admiralty, John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich. You might already know this, but I find it fascinating that the Hawaiian Islands are exposed peaks of a great undersea mountain range known as the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount Chain, formed by volcanic activity over a hot spot in the Earth's mantle. This is the birthday of Peter Marc Roger, born January 18, 1779. He was a physician, theologian, and lexicographer, which is someone who performs lexicography, <laughs> which is the art or craft of compiling, writing, and editing dictionaries. And I feel a bonus word coming up here. The word lexicography comes from lexicon, a word I've mentioned before, which is the vocabulary of a person, language, or branch of knowledge, and graphy, which means field of study or related to writing. Both of these word parts come ultimately from Greek. Back to Dr. Roger, though, a very accomplished man, He's best known for having written a book that was published in 1852, which is still in use today, The Thesaurus of English Words and Phrases, also known as Roger's Thesaurus. Dr. Roger lived to the age of 90. This is the birthday of one Thomas A. Watson, born January 18, 1854. He would be just as anonymous as any blade of grass growing out in your yard right now, except for the fact that he was assistant to the inventor, Alexander Graham Bell. His name became the first words ever said over the phone. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you, Bell said when using his new invention, the telephone. Mr. Watson lived to the age of 80. This is the birthday of author A. A. Milne, born January 18, 1882. He's the author of and is best known for books about a teddy bear named Winnie the Pooh. He was a noted playwright already, but the success of Winnie the Pooh has overshadowed all his previous work. 
By the way, the character of Christopher Robin in the Pooh stories is based on Milne's own son, Christopher Robin Milne. Mr. Milne lived to the age of 74. Now, have you ever heard of a thing called a Sopwith Camel? It's a type of airplane that was developed in the early 1900s and used in World War I. It was a product of the imagination of Thomas Sopwith, whose birthday is today. Thomas Sopwith was born on January 18, 1888. One of his earlier designs, the Sopwith Pup, was outdesigned by the Germans, and the redesign, originally called the Big Pup, came to be known as the Camel after a metal fairing that was installed over the gun breeches in order to protect the guns from freezing at altitude. This created a hump that led pilots to begin calling the aircraft Camel, although the plane was never officially named that, the Sopwith Camel. Back to Thomas Sopwith, though. In addition to aircraft design and construction, he was also a business executive and yachtsman probably more besides. Thomas Sopwith lived to the dear old age of 101. This is the birthday of Oliver Hardy, the Hardy of Laurel and Hardy, the comedy movie team that uh, made those movies from the 1920s on up into the 50s. He lived to the age of 65. This is the birthday of actor Cary Grant, born January 18, 1904. Known as one of classic Hollywood's definitive leading men, he had that transatlantic accent, a debonair demeanor, a lighthearted approach to acting, and a sense of comic timing. <laughs> Sounds like he must have been fun to work with. He acted in dozens of feature-length pieces and appeared in a number of shorts and cameos as well. Interestingly, he retired from the screen at the age of 62 when his daughter, Jennifer Grant, was born in order to focus on bringing her up and provide her with a sense of permanence and stability in her life. A very admirable decision on his part, I think. He lived to the age of 82. Now, I've mentioned before in a previous video that here in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, we are in the middle of winter, or whatever winter we're going to get in North Texas in January. But in the Southern Hemisphere, it's summer. And so the best time to, uh, the best time to do anything in Antarctica, of course, would be summer. You know, if you're going to go to Antarctica, this is the time to go. And so it is that on January 18th, 1912, Robert Falcon Scott and four companions reached the South Pole, only to find that Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen had beat him to it by about 33 days. Now, just because it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere, that does not by any stretch mean that Antarctica is ever any kind of pleasant or easy place to visit. So, not only disappointed that Amundsen had beat him there, now he and his crew had to make their way back to base camp. I kind of had a feeling at first that maybe this was like, you know, being the losing team and the home team's town, but it actually was worse than that because Scott and his party, all five of them, perished on their journey back from the pole through a combination of starvation and cold. The Amundsen Scott South Pole Station was later named after these explorers. On January 18, 1919, the Paris Peace Conference opened at Versailles, France, looking to begin the long, complicated negotiations that would officially mark the end of the First World War. In 1950, China and the Soviet Union formally recognized the Communist Democratic Republic of Vietnam, also known as North Vietnam, and agreed to provide military assistance. This is the birthday of Kevin Costner, born January 18, 1955. He has lots and lots of movies, TVs, and film credits under his belt, and is still working, as far as I can tell, as much as anyone can be working these days, and turns 66 in 2021. 
On January 18, 1958, the National Hockey League became integrated when Willie O'Ree took to the ice with the Boston Bruins in a game against the Montreal Canadiens. The Boston Strangler, Albert DeSalvo, was convicted of numerous crimes and sentenced to life imprisonment on January 18, 1967. On January 18, 1975, Barry Manilow's song Mandy was his first number one pop hit. On January 18, 1983, the International Olympic Committee restored Jim Thorpe's Olympic medals to his family. And I say it's about time. Jim Thorpe was of Sac and Fox native lineage. His native name, which I'm hesitant to try to pronounce, means Bright Path. Isn't that a great name, Bright Path? He was the first Native American to win an Olympic gold medal for the United States. Two medals, in fact, one for the decathlon and one for the pentathlon, 1912 Summer Olympics. He was a versatile sportsman, playing and performing a variety of sports competently. He would played a couple of seasons of semi-pro baseball, for which he did get paid, and uh, this was at some point before he went into the Olympics, and the Olympic Committee at that time said he was in violation of the amateurism rules that were in place at that time. For example, athletes who received money prizes for competitions were sports teachers or had competed previously against professionals were not considered amateurs and they were barred from competition. They stripped him of his medals. That hit him pretty hard as one might imagine. Jim Thorpe died in 1953 at the age of 65, but fortunately he still had family who could appreciate his gold medals being restored. Blessings to the late Jim Thorpe and his family. On January 18, 1985, the Coen brothers released their debut film, Blood Simple. Martin Luther King Jr. Day was officially observed for the first time in all 50 U.S. states on January 18, 1993. There were several total fatality plane crashes on January 18 in various years, and I think that's going to do it for us today. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. I always do. <laughs> As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Uh, along with the uh, playlist for all these videos. And you can check that out either in the show notes or, of course, it'll be up in the corner there. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. I've already said that about three times. <laughs> Let me say it three more. <laughs> Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Just a little bit slower. No, it's not. Okay, hold on. We'll just do that again. Okay, do that again. We'll have to finish this in a little bit. Do that again. Okay. That's not a nice way to say it. <laughs>